My name's Philip Benjamin. Um, I am a chiropractor now and I've uh, been practicing now for about five years. Um, I've got a couple of different things that I do. So um, I partly have a practice that I uh, look after. So I went into private practice about three years ago. I'm also on staff at Macquarie University as what we call a sessional academic. Um, and so what that means is that I uh, tutor and I lecture at the university as well. And uh, just recently last week, I was uh, given the title of being uh, a governor on the Sydney College of Chiropractic Board. So, uh, which means that I help oversee events in, uh, for our present and uh, past students here at Macquarie University that study chiropractic as well. So what we're going to do is uh, have a chat today um, about chiropractic and basically it's the journey that I've been on. Uh, so uh, I know a lot of people in year 11 and 12 are looking at different career paths and things to look at and uh, the first thing that pops into mind when they think to health um, is usually to go down medicine or pharmacy or dentistry. Um, however, there are a lot of other health professions that you can look into going to as well. So today we're going to look at what I've put to uh, or called a path to cracking success. So uh, for those that don't know where or aren't aware at the moment, chiropractic, you uses a lot of uh, what we call manual adjustments and they give off that uh, crack noise that you guys shouldn't be doing on yourselves. So, uh, and we can go in if anyone wants to know why, we can talk, have a chat about that afterwards as well. Okay, so there's six areas today that we'd like to cover in the time that we've been allocated today. Um, so we've got uh, Chiropractic 101. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to cover, uh, for those that aren't aware, or don't see a chiropractor, what is chiropractic? Um, so how the profession came to be about and in a nutshell what it derives from and uh, also the role of the chiropractor. So what my everyday job is in practice. Um, the second part we're going to look at is uh, choosing chiropractic. So things like uh, subject selection, uh, what we should be studying in year 11 and 12, um, and what are the good hallmark signs of becoming a chiropractor, or how do you know if you'll actually be good at uh, what, what chiropractic is. So the third section is uh, studying chiropractic. So what uh, we'll be looking at is, is life uh, at uni, um, so at, in particular at Macquarie University, and uh, why, the, um, why the MQ experience is uh, a great experience to have if you decide to go down this path, and also the subjects that we actually study in the Macquarie program. So uh, being one of the team, on, uh, one of the staff, as well, uh, we'd be able to go into a little bit more detail about the program. Part four, uh, we'll look at the post uh, life after becoming a student, what our career options are, what running your own practice is like. A lot of people think that being your own business owner is like the best thing ever. I can tell you now there's a lot of trouble and heartache that you go through first before you get to the point where most people get to when you see successful people. Um, the fifth part is, is it actually possible to chase your dreams? Um, so we won't go bursting any bubbles just yet, but we'll get to that later on in the talk. And finally, of course, as Casey's already pointed out, uh, we'll have a Q&A session at the end as well, where I'm happy to pretty much answer anything that you wish to talk about. So uh, we'll go on to the first section now. So chiropractic uh, 101. So this is our introduction. Uh, introduction, sorry, into uh, the profession. So chiropractic in Australia is what we call uh, primary health care. So what does that actually mean? It means you don't actually need a piece of paper or a letter or a referral to come in and see a chiropractor. So that means that you can walk in without an appointment, you can walk in uh, without going to the GP first or without going to see a specialist first. So why is that important? Uh, because most people think that you actually do or that you need to go and see someone else first. So uh, that, that means that we actually have the ability to screen. So for example, that means that if it's a problem that a chiropractor can't actually help with, we actually have to know who to send uh, who, who to send you to. So we then be able to uh, 
also, like a GP, screen off and send people to specialists or back to the GP or say, okay, this is actually uh, a, a dental problem or a physio problem um, or a podiatrist problem. So we'd be able to uh, refer people off to uh, different relevant health professions as well. Um, we're the, actually the largest third largest health profession globally. So many people uh, think we're actually slightly lower down the chain. We're actually number three. So there are actually more um, chiropractors in the world in, than physios, um, So, which is actually a bigger population in Australia. But globally, we're third after, of course, uh, medicine and uh, dentistry. And uh, so we then can look at what chiropractic is based on. So in a nutshell, it's based on the brain, spine, and nervous system. So what do we mean by that? Chiropractic was founded uh, probably over, just over a century ago now um, on the premise that, and the knowledge that the brain controls everything. And so because the brain controls everything, it means it dictates a lot of functions uh, within the body and in particular things like pain. So when we uh, have pain or when we have things that cause us discomfort, those messages are communicated through the spinal cord and through the nervous system. So what chiropractors generally do will check the spinal cord, uh, the spinal cord to see uh, if there's anything going on wrong through there. So if we look at it from a holistic point of view, you may have a knee issue or you may have a wrist issue or shoulder issue. But what we tend to forget is just because the pain is appearing in the shoulder, it doesn't mean that it's the shoulder alone that actually has the problem or the knee that has the problem. So chiropractors will treat the knee and then use our knowledge of anatomy and use our knowledge of, uh, say, where our nerves run and where our muscles connect to, to also assess the different other joints connecting through into that spinal region to make sure that the brain, that the spinal cord pathway and the actual joint itself are all functioning properly. So it's a bit more of a, a holistic approach towards uh, healthcare. Um, secondly, it's non-surgical, meaning that uh, it's a health profession where we don't uh, use we don't use any needles, well, unless you're doing dry needling, of course, as a technique, um, but um, we don't take blood out of you. We don't uh, cut you open. We don't, uh, so we do everything by hand, which is what chiropractic actually means. So that's derived from Greek and Latin terms, meaning to be done by hand. So it's non-intervention. So that's what we've put uh, before. We go through, there's many different techniques we can uh, use as chiropractors. The main uh, techniques that we use, uh, particularly in the Macquarie program, are the manual approaches. Uh, so that's what we call spinal adjustment and uh, also things like what we call terminal point technique, drop piece. Um, so what we do is, is we find our points of fixation or restriction and uh, we move those. We also use and utilize things like uh, rehab, so uh, stretches or strengthening programs as well. Um, so some people will uh, see people doing exercises with things like TheraBands or some sort of wobble boards or things like that as well. So we utilize those things as well so that you have care in between your visits as well. Um, common misconception is, is that chiropractic is dangerous. I can tell you now it's safe. We have plenty of research papers to prove that it's safe. Um, in fact, if you want to crunch the numbers properly and have a look at a comparison through there, you have a better chance of being hit by lightning than you actually have of something going wrong with chiropractic. So um, therefore, it is a very, very common misconception to say that um, something will go wrong. Uh, so. What we do, basically, we download a new set of you. So what we do is we assess everything top to bottom. So we will look everything from uh, from the skull right down to your feet. Most chiropractors will check everything out on your first session with them. So what we then do is then see, okay, you have an ankle problem. We'll look at ankle. We'll look at uh, spine, pelvis region where the nerves are interconnect to and then flow through to the top. So what we do is we put a program together for you. We, uh, we put in what we call a report of findings 
and then we say, okay, this is what we've found, this is how we propose we're going to treat it, and this is how long we think it's going to take for you to, to get better, and then how long we think it's going to take for us to strengthen it for you. You then say yes or no, we give you the right to go and see a second opinion, um, second, second opinion with either another chiropractor or another health professional, um, or if you're happy and ready to go, then we're good to go. So, um, and then we start treating uh, through that way. So I've put up a little um, little picture there for you of the importance there of looking after your spine, and it's quite simple. At this point in time, we have no such thing as a spine transplant. So therefore, it is pretty important knowing that the the spine actually houses your spinal cord, um, that it's a pretty important thing to look after. So make sure you look after your backs. Okay, so we'll move on to the second section now. Um, so that's choosing chiropractic and are you the right person for the job? So what subjects should I be studying in year 11 and 12? Now, should doesn't mean must. I'd like to make that uh, a big emphasis point um, through there, but why I say should is because from my, uh, from my experience, these are probably the subjects I wish I did in year 11 and 12 uh, before starting chiropractic. So HSC maths, chemistry, biology, and physics. Now, if you don't really wanna go GI Joe science in year, uh, year 11 and 12, that's cool. Uh, so if you were to pick one of the sciences, I would probably go chemistry or physics uh, to start off with. Why chemistry and physics? Um, because chemistry and physics, as as we've spoken about earlier, are the ones that we have to stick around with the longest. So, meaning that in first, second year, and into third year, you still have to be doing bits and pieces of those uh, of those core science units in the, uh, most chiropractic programs. Um, by uh, and they're much harder to get and apply. Biology, because there's less maths involved, um, require requires um, more probably rote learning rather than application, and that means it's easier to process and absorb. Um, so what if I actually haven't chosen those subjects? So if you're in year 11 and year 12 um, already and you haven't chosen, uh, chosen them, don't panic. Um, what usually generally happens is, is that you consider bridging course before going into uh, into first year uni. That's one option. Um, otherwise, make some really good friends with people that are good at chemistry, physics and biology. That tends to work quite well as well. So, um, and the other option is, is that you can always, uh, once you come on campus as well, attend what we call POW sessions. So we've got peer assisted learning here as well. So you can uh, go into, uh, it's almost like a mini tutorial groups that you can have with uh, tutors, uh, tutors that teach those subjects as well to get you back on board. So just because you haven't chosen those subjects, it doesn't mean that um, you can't, be, can't become a chiropractor. In terms of maths, um, Max is just nice to have because you, you're doing a science-based degree. Um, in terms of the actual mats involved, there's no true um, pure mats. It's all application through the science units. Um, so therefore, you don't have to worry um, about uh, pure mats subjects that you do in your two unit and extension one and two uh, subjects uh, in your 11 and 12. So what makes a good chiropractor? So there are, I've separated this into two different sections, right? So what your goals would be as a chiropractor and what the public expectation of a chiropractor is. So in terms of your goals, why you are a good why you would be a good chiropractor, you would be looking at things like a willingness to help people. That's probably first and foremost. Um, common, mis common thing that people look at is, is that I want to get into chiropractic because it's a health profession, which means I will make a lot of money. Um, so there's nothing wrong with making money, but at the same time, if you don't love what you do, you're actually not going to portray that 
to uh, the public that you're actually good at what you do. So you really have to have a knack for wanting to help people. So if you're thinking that it's just going to be a day in day out job because I, I'm just going to uh, move some joints and uh, do a few, give people a few exercises and go home, that's not really the reason why people become chiropractors. Um, another alternative is is that some people hate the sight of blood like me and so that makes it a great option to choose to become a chiropractor because chiropractor is non-surgical so if you still want to help people and uh, want to do it in a way that doesn't uh, doesn't require you to be like Dexter for example um, then you don't have to you don't have to so you can actually uh, do it in a way that uh, still makes you satisfied towards the uh, at the end of the day and thirdly chiropractic because it's non-interventional and also tries to do it without uh, the use of uh, hard medicines means that it's a nice feeling knowing that you can actually help people without then going to the surgery step so a lot of people will come to you first as an option before surgery in the hope that they don't actually have to go to surgery straight away or that they can actually prolong the surgery. So if that means that, for example, they've got uh, an issue with their back and we can actually extend their longevity from going to surgery for another two, three years, or they've been placed on a wait list for two, three years before they can actually get into surgery and they know that they can actually get a reduction in pain, a lot of people will come and see you for that as well. So what does the public expect of a chiropractor? Well, the public expects someone that they can trust. So if you're one of, um, so if you're a person that again, likes to help people and can show why, then that is a really important step to make because chiropractic along with all health professions, people hold health professions in very high regard. So they have a lot of respect for the people that go to see because there's nothing more important to people than people's health. So as the saying goes, the best wealth to have is your health. So you need to make sure then that you have the ability then to answer any question that's been thrown at you. So we aim then to make sure that you have the knowledge and prepare the skills that you have to then go and uh, go out into the world and say, yes, this uh, I can help people for a living and I can do it well. So chiropractic calling, what, what, what am I going on about here? So why did I become a chiropractor? Well, I've already told you half of, part of that story. I can't stand blood. So I'm not one of those people that likes enjoying law and order SVU because there's too much gruesome blood going on through there. I'm not a fan of Dexter. So there's things that I sort of clicked into my mind. I was in three different boats in at the end of year 12, believe it or not, and they were all very different. Um, I was thinking of going into law, I was thinking of going into teaching, and I was thinking of going into health. Ultimately, I chose chiropractic, but you're probably thinking they're, they're three very different uh, roles to go into. So how did I choose to become a chiropractor? I love helping people. So the then that ticks off for all three different health professions, right? Um, and even into law and teaching to a certain degree, I, uh, they all involve helping people. Um, but my ultimate calling was is that uh, when I was younger um, and still now, I do a lot of swimming and uh, I swam a lot as well. So I had quite, uh, quite a few issues, um, particularly towards the later end of year 11 and 12 with my swimming where I used to get a lot of stiffness. I wouldn't call it pain uh, or constant pain or things like that, but I knew that I wasn't uh, going as well as I probably should be. So then I decided to go and see uh, see a chiropractor and uh, I got told a uh, chiropractic story and uh, chiropractor said that they could help me and lo and behold I started feeling a lot better but then what I started noticing is not just that my shoulder improved but because I was in a better state um, that I could uh, better state of mind and things that it actually allowed me to help sleep better at night and allowed me to just run my everyday life better. So that made me tick over into thinking, okay, chiropractic is a possible um, option for me to 
to take and look at um, into going and that's ultimately what led me in. Um, I started going to the student clinic when I was um, in first year as well. Um, so I went and saw my fellow peers at uni in their final year and um, that sort of cemented uh, into my mind that I was heading down the right path. Okay, so let's have a look now at studying chiropractic. So, um, experiencing five years at Macquarie. So, as the title suggests, it takes five years to become a chiropractor in this country. Um, so, what we're going to do now is just go to a short clip. So, this is one that we've prepared earlier of you. So, these are a couple of our students. Um, so, this is a cohort from last year's uh, fifth years. So, they're our final year students. And this is what a typical week of our students at Macquarie uh, do and go through. Okay, so pretty cool campus too, isn't it? So you can see our facilities are quite good. Um, yes, we do have our own swimming pools here as well that you can go and chill out afterwards as well. And uh, we've got some really good teaching labs as well. So it's a five year program. Um, so we, in order to become qualified in Australia, you need to study for a minimum of five years in the chiropractic, uh, in the chiropractic field. At Macquarie, we break that down into two degrees. So the Bachelor of Chiropractic Science and and the Master of Chiropractic. So the undergraduate program, which is the bachelor's program, is three years. Um, so our focus in that program is on the basic sciences. Um, so our physics, chemistry, and biology. And then you'll do majors in anatomy and chiropractic skills. And we also start touching um, on things like our, our statistics and research projects, um, and also things like uh, being able to identify uh, disease as well. So then we go into our master's program. So our master's of chiropractic program is two years uh, full-time and by full-time I mean it's more than a full-time job. So you will uh, you'll pretty much live and breathe on campus uh, for the two years of your master's program. The focus there is on fine-tuning everything. So um, we have diagnosis, um, so that's basically making sure that you know what you're treating and uh, where uh, how, how to treat it, so being able to identify things. Uh, radiology, so what that means is that we uh, chiropractors have the ability to uh, read x-rays as well so we can uh, read through x-rays CT scans as well and we do a little bit of taking uh, uh, quite a bit of uh, taking images as well and clinical rationale so being able to put the diagnosis to treatment plan uh, treatment plan together and then being able to treat so you can see in the video there that we were going through some adjustments some fast-paced work we were looking at uh, playing with some uh, theraband and stretching exercises as well so being able to put those programs together and applying the knowledge so in our final year so what we call fifth year um, so the final year of masters you also need to do what we call a clinic internship so 
Macquarie has uh, three clinics at the moment scattered through Sydney in which you um, do your clinical hours um, as well. So you're getting a lot of prac and hands-on experience as well. Um, but having said that, your prac and hands-on starts from week one first year. So we are very big on our skills program at Macquarie. So we have a lot of hands-on workshops. So you go through uh, a lot of prac work while, whilst you're here at Macquarie. And we also have uh, supervised study sessions as well. So if you don't think you're getting enough uh, hands-on practice time, you can always rock up to uh, one, of, uh, one of our supervised session sessions as well. Just don't try and do it the week before exams or prac exams because you'll notice that they're a lot more busy than usual and you may be turned back. So uh, get on top of things early. So the study load, it's a science course. So therefore, it's not Disneyland or Movie World. You are going to be there a lot. You are going to be there a lot more hours than, say, a law student or a commerce student or an art student is there. So typically, you're looking at about 20 hours a week, uh, 20 hours a week in our undergraduate program, and that stretches to about 35 to 38 hours a week in our master's program. Um, so like I said, lots of hours through there, but again a very rewarding experience because there's lots of hands-on work there as well okay so chiropractor's life so this is probably uh, a bit more exciting so we can see through here put up a, a little meme that I found up uh, found on Facebook last week of what the uh, what the world what everyone thinks a chiropractor is so what I actually do there is a lot of paperwork involved okay um, Fortunately, I don't have in-laws just yet, so they don't think I'm a witch doctor just at this point in time, right? But I do like to think that I can heal the world from time to time, and sometimes I surprise myself as well. Um, like I said, competing health professionals think that we're quite dangerous, and that's a common misconception, so that's why we've got pictures of Rambo uh, up there as well. And a lot of society do believe what, in what we do. You'll find the majority of people that walk into a chiropractic office are very happy. So according to the Australian Bureau of Statistics, we're actually the second most uh, satisfied uh, health profession in the country. Believe it or not, most people are most satisfied with their dentist. Um, so they, they come in at number one. So this is my existence in a nutshell. Um, this is what we deal with uh, day and day. So what can we actually go into when you graduate from your master's program? So there's actually heaps of options. I've listed uh, a few different things there. So uh, first of all, the majority of people go into becoming a practicing chiropractor. Um, it's why you've slaved away for five years. It's why you want to why you want to finish. It's so that you can go out there and help people feel better. Um, another vi very viable option is going into research. So Macquarie, uh, for those that aren't aware, is a very research intensive university. So we are very big in our research program and at the moment we're actively looking for people to help research so that we can get what we do out there so that people actually know uh, what we do and how we do things and that more importantly that it works. So going into research is also uh, a big important uh, an important career path that you could choose to go down. You could teach at a university as well so not necessarily at Macquarie but you could also go to one of the other four institutions in the in the country as well. Um, so that's a could be as a tutor or a lecturer that does take a few years to build up okay. Um, you could run or own your own practice as well um, so you could become a business owner. Uh, so some other options are is, is that a lot of people sometimes go into things like insurance claims um, or so they work for insurance companies over assessments and things like that whether they should get their claims process um, or they could go into the legal field as well. Okay, so this, in a nutshell, is a selfie of my life. So they're the three different things that I do at the moment. They are, I'm a full-time chiropractor. Um, I run my own practice as well. So you can see a couple of snapshots there of what my clinic looks like. And uh, I'm also what we call a sessional academic here at Macquarie. So being a chiropractor, so I practice about 30 hours a week at the moment, so over six days. So that's probably a lot of time when you think about it. Not everyone does 30 hours a week. A lot of people choose to do maybe 15 or 20 hours. Um, one of the beauties of being a chiropractor is a lot of 
uh, most chiropractors get to choose and dictate their own working hours. So you don't have to practice full time if you don't want to. Um, some people choose then to run and own their own practice um, when they, uh, after getting a few years experience working for someone else, um, or some people may choose not to run their own practice and continue just to work for someone else and we call, we call them chiropractic associates. Um, and of course the sessional academics, so I teach uh, final year master's students, uh, we, I teach what we call electrical physical therapy technique, um, so, and, uh, so that's in the first semester of our final year program. So this is a snapshot into my practice. So my practice is called Pure Health. It's in Ashfield, which is um, downtown Sydney, so about 10 minutes from the CBD. Um, so part of the things that I've got to make sure that are under control. So this is um, so we have a YouTube page that we've got videos for our exercises for our clients, um, which you can also freely um, access as well through our website. And I've put the website up on there as well if you want to have a look at. Uh, we run our own Facebook pages. Um, so you can see down the bottom there in the middle, there's a picture of my team. I I love my team to bits. Um, as you can see, we eat a lot of food. We go out a lot. Uh, we have a very good team dynamic as well. Um, so we also go to field field events as well. So we get invited to a lot of uh, carnivals or fates and things. So we have a, a partners program. So we're in on very good terms with our local primary schools. So we go to their things like their garden fates or PNF nights. Uh, we go to carnivals. Such, so that was uh, the one you can see in the top right there is the TVB carnival. So we're doing a com uh, community service uh, uh, event there in conjunction with uh, Medibank Private. Um, so we were looking. Uh, uh, and giving complimentary spinal checks just to make sure everyone's posture is up to up to date as well. So pretty much I work 30 hours, but it's it feels a lot longer than 30 hours, um, which is what part of um, part of my life is. But it's a very rewarding uh, life to know. At the end of the day, you wake up in the morning um, and you go to bed at night knowing that you've actually made a difference to someone that day. Um, so that's an experience money really can't buy. Okay, so finally we're into the last section here, so chasing after your dreams. So this doesn't actually necessarily have to be about chiropractic, but first and foremost, you have to look at establishing where you want to go. So I think the thing that I want to get across to, to everyone at the moment is, is that you need to find the dream first, okay? So there's no point um, in saying that you want to go into uni just or going into a tradeship or whatever you want to do just for the sake of going into one. Um, why? Because you won't enjoy the experience. And if you don't enjoy the experience, you won't finish. Uh, and there's nothing worse than starting uni, then dropping out, or starting a trade, then dropping out. Having said that, don't panic because the light bulb moment will come to you. They come in little things, like when you're studying your year 11 and 12 subjects, you will have subjects that you love and you will have subjects that you hate, right? Some of them will, you are doing because they're forced upon you um, and some of them you chose as electives and then go, hey, you know what? I actually don't enjoy this subject anymore. Then don't be stupid and then go and follow that at uni because that's not gonna work for you, okay? So they're the little hints that you get going through there, okay? Go and experience these things. If you are interested or think you're interested in something, go and find someone, okay? So for example, if you are genuinely interested in becoming a chiropractor, go and visit a chiropractor, right? You don't actually need to be in pain to go and visit a chiropractor. So remember, it's about, you can go to just to see overall posture, health and wellbeing, or I'm sure if you are uh, nice enough, you can give a phone call to the nearest chiropractor or an email, uh, send it through and just say, hey, I'm interested. Is it okay if I come and watch you for half a day during the school holidays or something and see if it's actually for you? Same goes for most other professions. Most are quite happy uh, to do that. Um, you may have to fish around one uh, to two or three different practices or firms or shops or something like that, but most will be happy. Make a to-do list. Now, everyone tells you to do this, right? But the to-do list is so important. You need to set out the goals that you actually want to achieve, okay? Keep them real, okay? And then put some up there that are actually quite hard to achieve. Because once you start making the real goals, then you'll start pushing a bit harder, okay? Uh, third point, probably most important, ask for help. I know you're teenagers, I know you think you're indestructible. The point is, is, is that help is always there, okay? All you've got to do is ask for it. 
people are actually willing to help because unlike what teens think, we know that you need help, but you need to approach people. There is no shame in asking for help. In fact, people actually applaud and commend you for asking for help because it shows that you actually care about yourself enough to know that you want to do something with yourself, okay? Mistakes happen. I wanted to say something else, but I think it was a bit um, inappropriate, but we will uh, we'll leave it with that there. You will grow from your experiences. Don't be afraid to make mistakes because mistakes are a learning curve, okay? So if you make a mistake or you stuff up, absorb it, think about it, and then see how you can actually improve and get better. And then if you can do all those things, you will actually go after and you'll actually get what you're dreaming for. Okay, so we're going to leave you off with this last one through here. For anyone who has watched P. Body and Sherman, this comes on about um, mid-movie. For those that haven't, this pretty much simple symbolises why I love doing what I do. <gasps> Peabody, that was amazing! Paul, wasn't that amazing? I'm more into rock and roll. <laughs> I meant flamenco. Pipes? Uh, didgeridoo. This has been great, but a complete waste of time. Now let's get Penny and go home! Are you all right, Paul? I'm fine. <laughs> Paul, if I might... Stay away from me, Peabody. Just get back. I need traction. You can trust me, Paul. I'm a licensed chiropractor. Ow! <laughs> Peabody, I feel great. I, I really feel great. Peabody, you're a miracle worker. Okay, so I'm not sure about miracle worker, but we do have a lot of people that walk out of my practice at least feeling better uh, afterwards. So that in a nutshell is a very dramatized way of what I do. Um, so we'll leave that talk there. From there, I'm finished talking now. So if you've got some questions, go for it. I would have to say, for mostly, I love helping people. I love being around people. I love talking to people. So I'm a, as you can tell, I'm a bit of a social person. Um, I love a good chat. I love talking to people, and I love to get to know people. And for me, that was all well and good, but I needed to know that. I could help people as well. And I think that, again, going into that uh, experience that I had in year 11 and 12 by going to see uh, a chiropractor as well made me solidify that this was a good path to go down to, uh, go through. I went to university open days as well and then visited um, some uh, other things, did some homework into it, and I realised a lot of things clicked for me, um, that it's a... It's a well-respected profession. It's uh, something that I could do long-term. It was something that I could see, my, see myself in in terms of for a long period of time because I knew that in, at the end of the day, I could put a smile on someone's face after every session. And I think that was what was important to me. Yes, I went through phases of anything and everything. Um, so I did think about going into law at one stage and that was because um, I was in the school debating team. Um, so I do love uh, I do love a good argument from time to time as well. And I actually thought about becoming a teacher. Um, so those were my three main areas that I thought of going into. Having said that, I pretty much have all three of those in my life now at the moment as well. So I still teach at the university um, and I also still help out with my high school uh, that I used to go to for, with the debating teams as well. So I pretty much do all three things that I do at the moment right now as well.
Yes. Uh, I have... Have I ever stuffed up? Yes, I have, and to say that they would be numerous times. Um, so whether they're small or whether they're little, how it hurts. It does. Um, it does make things. I would say it's a good reality check. It proves to you or reminds you that you are human. We're not. Uh, we're not some DC comic. We're not some sort of superhero that we can uh, just think that we're indestructible. And it gives us the opportunity to reflect and go back and make ourselves uh, a better person. So. Um, I can remember that so things stuffing up things like I know that I stuffed up a couple of say research projects or I didn't deliver something uh, deliver something on time or I didn't hold my word on something and that meant that that person now no longer talks to me so it means uh, or, or they did for a short period of time anyway so you then review and then you go back and go um, yes there are there are stuff ups that happen and it's okay to make those mistakes. Put it into perspective, in a first year setting, you've probably got two hours of lecture to four hours of prac per week. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So, um, and with that's with your pure sciences and with your chiropractic and your anatomy units, that's usually a two hour lecture with a two hour prac. Um, or tutorial. Um, so at least half of your hours are based hands-on. Uh, as you get uh, as you get older or as you mature through through the course, that actually extends further and you have more prac hours and less theory hours. Um, or the theory is integrated into the prac class as you go along. Um, so we um, so we have a lot more hands-on and by final year it's pretty much all hands-on because you will be spending at least 12 hours a week in clinic. Um, so eight hours uh, treating and what we call the beloved four hour reception shift. So you also get to learn how to use PayPass and uh, terminals and book people in as well. So you do graduate actually uh, clinic ready. I dream a lot. Um, now that sounds really silly and stupid, but I believe a lot in my dreams. And um, so, because my dreams are really crazy. Um, so that's part of how I know when I have light bulb moments. However, if you want to take of it from a realistic point of view, usually someone comes in and gives you a bit of a nudge or a bit of a push. Right, and at first you think, uh, why is this person here? Right, and then you go back and you think about it, and then you and then you start to realize, okay, this might actually be a viable option. So usually it's someone that comes in or walks in, or it could be someone that you've known for ages, or it could be someone that you've just met, and they usually give you the push or the nudge that you need to, to help you discover what you need to do. Personally, myself, we are what we call um, a diversified practice. So what that means is, is that we use uh, a lot of manual adjusting. So what you saw in the Peabody and Sherman, to a certain extent, uh, what we do is, is that we crack people. Um, so it's, it's nowhere near as drastic or as... Um, as scary as that, that cartoon showed, it's more realistic and in line with what you saw with the first video uh, with, our, with our students. So what we do is we will line people up, we'll find the point that needs to move and then we'll apply the pressure into that point and then uh, go, go for a pop uh, through there. Um, we also use drop point, uh, terminal point technique or TBT at the practice. So um, what we do is, is that if you go to some chiropractic clinics, there will be a, uh, uh, our beds lift up in different sections. So what we do is we push uh, that part of the section up or we pull it away um, and then what we do is we drop the bed down and it makes a clunk, the bed makes a clunk noise. Um, so particularly good uh, for certain parts of the population or if they're very much in acute pain uh, where they wouldn't maybe not be able to handle a, a bigger manual adjustment at that point in time.
Um, we also use a little bit of soft tissue techniques. So sometimes our muscles are a little bit tight uh, or uh, spasmed up a little bit. So we'll strip, the, uh, strip those down or just work on those just to get them to release. And then we also um, give some exercises, stretches, ex uh, strengthening work as well. Um, usually we send that through as a, um, as a video or we um, have them through and they're freely available through our web, uh, YouTube channel as well. When you crack things, you are releasing, I'm going to put it nicely, happy gas. Um, so when you, um, when you go popping and releasing things, what you're actually doing are moving joints that are not fixated. So when you move joints that are not fixated, it will always feel good because you're releasing the happy gas off, but you're not actually moving the points that are actually sore or stiff. And really the only people that know how to identify that are chiropractors because then what we do is we move the restriction. Uh, rather than the ones that can move just for the sake of moving, which is why you shouldn't go doing them because what you end up doing is making them more, uh, more loose and more lax, which then gives you a bit more of an addiction to try and get them to move because they feel good. Thank you, everyone. So I hope you've enjoyed uh, the talk today. And uh, if you've got any other questions or if you want, just feel free to contact the university and we're happy to pass, it, pass, pass them on to me as well. Have a great day, everyone.